Good morning. Welcome to Declare Victory. This is JC. Happy Monday. Good morning, JC. Happy Monday. It's Brother Michael. Hey, Brother Michael. Have a great day. Yes, ma'am. You too. Thank you very much. Good morning. Welcome to Declare Victory. This is JC. Happy Monday. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Good morning. Monday to you, beautiful. This is Kemper. Happy Monday, everyone. Good morning. Happy Monday. And thank you. Anyone else? Good morning. Good morning. Welcome Good to the Good morning. Many Eva. Many Eva. God. God. All Amen. Good morning, Yvonne. Yes, God is good all the time. You have a great day. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to Declare Victory. This is JC. Good morning. It's sunshine. Happy Monday. Good morning, sunshine. Happy Monday. Anyone else? Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Declare Victory. This is JC. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Declare Victory. This is JC, and I am your hostess. Happy Monday. Good morning. Happy Monday. This is Joyce. God bless you all. Thank you. Good morning, Joyce, and God bless you as well. Thank you. You're very welcome. Anyone else? Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Declare Victory. This is Chase C., and I am your hostess for the day. Good morning, JC. This is Gloria. Good morning, Gloria. Happy Monday. Happy Monday to you, too. Good morning, fam. Thank you. Anyone else? Good morning and welcome to Declare Victory. This is JC. Happy Monday. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Monday. Welcome to Declare Victory. This is JC. I am your hostess for today. Anyone like to say good morning or hello? God bless you all. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Declare Victory. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall all rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Good morning. It's Krishanda. God bless you. Good morning, Krishanda. Happy Monday, and God bless you as well, sweetie. Happy Monday. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Anyone I else? Had you give me Good one morning. of them. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Was there someone on the line? Good morning. Good morning, it's Susie. Good morning, sis. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Happy Monday, and say hi to Rick for me. I sure will. Happy Monday to you, too. Love you. Love you, too. Have a good day. Anyone else? You, too, sir. Good morning. This is Juanita. Happy Monday. Good morning. Good morning, Juanita, and happy Monday. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. JC. It's Boxy. Happy Monday. Good morning, Moxie. Happy Monday to you, too. You have a great day. You, too. Thank you. Good morning. This is Diane. Hey, good morning, Diane. How are you? Good morning, JC. Happy Monday. Thank you. Happy Monday to you, too, and you have a blessed day. You, too. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, JC. It's Dee Dee. I love you. Good morning, Sis Dee Dee. I love you, too, sweetie. Tell mom hi and kiss Ruby for me. 
You have a Amen. blessed day. Thank you, babe. Anyone else? Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Clear Victory. This is JC. Happy Monday. Good morning. Welcome to the Clear Victory. This is JC. Happy Monday to all. Anyone else would like to say good morning before we start the call? Good morning, JC. Good morning. Declare victory is Rochelle. Happy Motivated Mindful Monday. Amen. Good morning, Rochelle. Happy Monday. Anyone else before we get started? Okay, it's time to get started with the call. Before we move forward, we ask you to mute your line so that we can proceed. Hello again. My name is JC, and I am your hostess. Thank you for joining us here on Declare Victory. We are a prayer call that meets Monday through Friday, starting at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 a.m. Central Standard Time, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to edify, empower, encourage, and equip you in your walk with Christ. Make sure to call in during the month of May, where our monthly theme is entitled Deliverance. This month, the declarations will focus on how Christ is our deliverer and how he transforms our lives and gives us the ability to live victorious lives. Make sure you invite a friend so they can be blessed too. There is one announcement today. First, please join us tonight and every Monday night for Marriage Matters for married couples or married hopefuls, you can call in to the same phone number tonight at 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, 9.30 to 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You will be happy that you did. There's one prayer request, and that's coming from me. Can we please lift up my granddaughter, Antonia? She had a liver transplant transplant when she was two years old, but she's now 28, praise the Lord. But she's in the hospital now, um, something to do with her tonsil. So if we can lift her up in prayer, I really would appreciate it. Amen. The order of the call, prayer and corporate praise will be brought by Christina Joy. The declaration will be brought by Letitia and John. Then we will go right into the closing comments hosted by the declare. Once again, the order of the call, prayer, and corporate praise will be brought by Christina Joy. The declaration will be brought by Letitia and John. Then we will go right into the closing comments hosted by the declare. The scripture for today, Psalms 34 and 4. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. At this time, we ask you to put your phones on mute until instructed to come off mute. I now pass the call to the prayer warrior, Christina Joy. Everyone have a blessed day, and I love you. Hallelujah, Lord. We just thank you this morning. You are great and you are awesome. And you keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and keep your commandments. I ask that you would allow your ear to be attentive and your eyes open that you may hear the prayers of your servants, which we pray before you now. And we thank you for this day. And we thank you for this opportunity to be in partnership with you through prayer, for you uniting our hearts with yours. We thank you for your mercies, which are new every morning, and we enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. We thank you and praise you for keeping us away from any danger seen and unseen throughout the night. And we come to you knowing that we are citizens of heaven, that we are kingdom saints, knowing that whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever we loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in your name, you are in the midst. And so we touch and agree right now. We ask that there would be an atmosphere of supernatural healing 
for we know by the stripes Jesus you bore on the cross we are made, we are healed and made whole. So we ask that Jehovah Rapha would be in the presence of Antonia as she is getting the healing in her tonsils, that you would allow for your healing and the miracle anointing to touch her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, that you would allow for her tonsils to work in the way that you have created them to work from the moment that you met her in her mother's womb. And we just thank you for her long life. We thank you that no matter what happened when she was younger, what the doctor said about her life expectancy, that you declare that she shall live and she shall not die and declare the works of the Lord. So we know that because of that, that supernatural healing is her portion in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you for giving JC peace that passes all understanding concerning um, Antonia and concerning um, her tonsils and knowing that she will be healed as we declare her healing this day and it's being set forth before her now. We we lift up before you this nation. We, we ask that you would continue to keep a watch over this nation, that you would guide every single leader, whether they're in the regional or the local government, all the way up to the executive branch, that you would surround them with those people who would give them wisdom, and not just any wisdom, Lord, but we ask that they would get the wisdom which is from above, wisdom that is first of all pure and is peace-loving and considerate and gentle, that is willing to yield to reason, that is full of compassion and good fruits, um, that you would continue to cause a hedge of protection to be over this nation as we are members of this nation, but more importantly, because we are members of your kingdom. You said that we can decree a thing and it shall be established as we are also part of a royal priesthood and a chosen generation because we are a peculiar people that we can intercede on behalf of the sins and the wickedness of this nation. You said, Lord, that if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then you will hear from heaven and you will forgive their sin and you will heal their land. So we ask that you would release an atmosphere of healing throughout the land, that you would allow for there to be um, a deliverance atmosphere. For you said deliverance and healing is the children's bread. So we know that if we run to you as our strong tower and it's in you that we are, that we can go to when we're safe and that if we have faith, if we believe mm, that we know that even demons tremble in the name of Jesus, that because of that, Lord, we have that authority to ask for the deliverance to happen to all of us here on this earth, all of us here in this nation. So right now we ask, Lord, because you are our light and our salvation, because you are the strength of our life and you never gave us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind, that you would allow for us as we go through this month of deliverance that you would allow for us to be delivered from anything that is trying to oppress us and hold us back from the enemy. Um, and whether it's emotional torment, physical torment, mental torment, or spiritual torment, that by the end of this month, every single person that listens on this call, every single person that listens to the playback of this call will experience supernatural deliverance of any <clears throat> and every oppressive thought, an oppressive spirit. For you said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils and they shall speak in new tongues. So as we are learning and becoming and all those who also know how to cast out devils, that you will also allow us to speak with new tongues. Let our wording be words that have a shift as our minds are shifted into knowing who we are in Christ Jesus. Continue, Lord, to enlighten the eyes of our understanding. Let the things that we hear as they are your word bring in, that the entrance of your word bring light. I thank you right now. We thank you for everything that you've done and everything you're doing. We ask your blessings would be released upon each and every person on this day in each and every area of our life. As we know we can acknowledge you not only as our deliverer, but we acknowledge you as our provider, as our protector. We confess that our steps are ordained by you and we walk in your perfect will this day. I ask that because we are planted by your rivers of living water, you would release a refreshing over us. You would release wisdom. You would release joy. You would release your peace that passes all understanding and that the violent flame of your love would be felt in our innermost being. So as we begin to take our phones off of mute 
as we release a sound into the heavens. We do so knowing that these words are covered by the blood of Jesus. We come in a posture of humility, knowing we have nothing that we can give you but a broken you, spirit and a broken and a contract heart. We need everything that you can give us in this hour. Everything you can give us in this hour. So right now we ask that you would give us everything in the desire of our heart. And you said if we act in our own, we have not. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. So right now we say, Lord, that let our hands be in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we ask the Lord that you would forgive us and we would all of us in order to know In the name of Jesus. So I ask right now that you would anoint the the declarers as they are about to come forth, that you would allow for your anointing and your glory to be felt and to cover each and every word that they speak. Holy Spirit, that you would increase as they decrease, and that through your word and through the revelation of your word, you would release upon us the atmosphere of even more deliverance. And we have the confidence of knowing as we approach you that if we ask anything according to your will, you hear us. And we know that if you hear us and you listen to us for whatever we ask, that we have been granted the request which we ask of you because we are asking these things according to your will. And we know that you've heard us. I take solace in knowing your words shall never return back to you void, but it accomplishes what you please and it prospers. And because you said in Numbers 14, 28, surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do the very things that I heard you say. All we have to do is act, and it shall be given speak, and we shall find knock, and the door will be opened. 
You are no respecter of persons. You show no partiality. And whoever fears you and works in righteousness, you accept. So we thank you for your acceptance. We praise you and we magnify you. And we thank you for the open channels even now in the atmosphere that you are releasing of deliverance through every word that these declarers speak right now as their tongues are the pen of a ready writer and you are the one writing. As they yield to you, you get all the glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for all that you're doing, all that you've done, and everything you're going to do. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Patricia from Arizona. Thank you, JC, for hosting and Christina Joy for bringing that prayer in this morning. It's been nice to hear from all of the other declarers about their experiences and teachings on deliverance this month. Today, me and my husband want to bless you with a word that God has given us to share. Before we start, let us do a quick prayer. Lord, we come humbly to you as we can to share your word. We thank you for who you are and what you have done. Lord, if you don't do anything else, you will have satisfied because you have done enough. We thank you for our covering, blessing our finances, blessing our children, and above all, blessing our spirits with your word. May it be nurturing to others so that can be drawn closer to you. Continue to decrease us and increase you. We thank you, we love you, and we give you all the glory. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. For our sermon this morning, we will be discuss deliverance in three stages. The first stage being immediate deliverance. The second stage is the test and trials you go through in life. And the third stage is the final call. Deliverance is an action. It is one that is taken when you have been nudged by God to surrender your life to Christ, which takes you from being an heir of darkness to an heir of light. Immediate deliverance is when you give your life to Christ and go from death to life and no longer bound to hell. Deliverance from bondage is what we receive when we receive the blessings of the Holy Ghost, which comes to reside in us. Psalms 1850 in the King James Version says, Great deliverance giveth he to his king and showeth mercy to his anointed, to David and to his seed forevermore. The NIV version says he gives his king great victories. He shows unfailing love to his anointed, to David and to his descendants forever. A personal story of mine is when I was younger, I grew up being very poor and the only thing we had was Christ. As I poured out my life to him, I was able to receive the blessings. My siblings and I suffered a lot of the things before knowing Christ, molestation, hunger, just to name a few. So I believe that he would have spared, saved me from that situation had I known and called upon him. Uh, the reason I say that is because of how he does me now. I feel that in my heart of hearts that I would have been spared of that and all the torment that came along with it. I tell you, as I walk through this life today, with Christ, with him leading and guiding me through the torment that I received, I am able to use that experience to be able to witness to those that have gone through some of the same things. The second stage is deliverance is the test and trials that you go through in life that you encounter. Now, Proverbs 21, 31 of the NIV states, the horse is made ready for the day of battle, but victory rests with the Lord. King James states, the horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. The horse represents the weapon of war, 
meaning whatever you choose to help fight your battle. Now, a personal story of my drug and alcohol use, uh, I used to escape what I had encountered in being molested and, and poor. Uh, you know, I was prophesied as to who my wife would be and how my life would somewhat turn out. Um, I've had many occasions where people would walk up to me and have visions of what my life was like, but no one would tell me of any of the encounters of hardship that I would go through. Um, when I had met my wife, we, we, we got married maybe six months later, and uh, it was a journey that we have been on for 17 years. Um, I had brought my drug and alcohol use into the marriage, and, and so it was very trying in the beginning. Uh, but we, we suffered through things for the next seven years of, in the beginning of our marriage, and, and then deliverance that came about because my wife continued to keep nudging me and, and, and getting on me. And so as I continued to wrestle with the demons that were within, you know, I had cried out to God, and I said, God, enough is enough. You know, I want better. I want better from my household. And uh, he brought deliverance to me and set me free. He took the taste completely out of my mouth, and I haven't gone back since. But I tell you, um, if I turn away from Christ at any given time, then all those things will come rushing back to me, even at a more severe uh, uh, conditioning period. And so um, if I don't stay engulfed in the word on a daily basis and call upon his name daily, uh, I leave myself open to falling back into uh, these same things. Now, my wife was a vital part of the process by reminding me of who I was. Uh, I was a man of God, and I was a vessel that was to be used by God and to be a leader and a wonderful husband and a very good husband and father. Uh, she continuously pressed down on my forehead with her thumb, reminding me who I was in Christ Jesus and to be strong and to cast down those strongholds that had me bound. I think it's because of my ultimatums and me kind of standing my ground to those um, where he knew I wasn't um, going to go to the left or to the right. I stood where I stood and I meant what I meant. Um, I didn't want drugs or alcohol to ruin his life and I surely didn't want it to ruin mine. Um, as a wife, my major part was to keep them in line and, and ask certain questions here and there. And that was just to make sure that we were going to be on the same course. Uh, this is both spiritually and cardinal because as we're living in this cardinal world, we have to continue to remind ourselves who we are in Christ. I used to ask, does he have our safety net in place? Is my safety net in place? I know we're each other's keeper. And while he's chasing after God, I am to follow, and our kids are to follow us. When my husband went to rehab and stuff, and he was still dabbling in those areas. I was put in a position to be the breadwinner. I was the one holding down the family, maintaining the bills, and, and foremost, shielding our children from his private life. Because I didn't want them to see that. I didn't want them to know that. But once God delivered my husband from drugs and alcohol, it was still very challenging for me. Because I still wanted to remain in the role rather than releasing it and falling back into my place. So see, it's where, this is where my stage of deliverance had to come. I had to relinquish the power that I had given myself. God didn't give that to me. I gave that to myself. And I also had to get delivered from the mindset. And that was for in order to me acknowledge and accept the role that was intended for me. 
My husband could now claim they had a household, but how could I trust him to actually do that after all we've been through? Well, it was by increasing my relationship with God and allowing him to lead and guide me. I remember a great aunt of mine prophesied to me, and she said, you will help free your husband from drugs and alcohol, and he will bring you closer to God. Now, I didn't know this lady, so this came very, it was an alert to me, you know, for her to say something to that magnitude of me and her not knowing what to me. But I remember God saying to me, this call may be re- Your husband, I created especially for you. But don't become complacent. Because in First John, the second chapter, verse 16, it reads, For everything in this world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. I'm learning that we can lose or delay what God has meant for us. I'm being taught that you have to that you could even slow down your blessings by your actions or lack of. And that's not something that I want to do. Hebrews eleven thirty five talks and says, Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured refuse to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. The third stage we're going to talk about is the deliverance is being the final call. Meaning you leave the earth and God gets to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Then you can enter into the kingdom of God. People think they would get a better reward if they feel they should wait to do things without God's deliverance and to be told, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, for I knew you not. And that comes from Matthew 7 and 23. Why should I go through hardship if the gift is given freely? God, God works with us on a daily basis. But we'll have those that'll still be stiff-necked and hard of hearing. And as it says in the word, there'll be those that would wait to do what's to be done because they feel as if they'll get a greater reward at the end. Uh, People will run around here and try to operate on their own strength and their own thinking and ability. Uh, But that's not so. God says, in all your ways, acknowledge me, and he will direct your path. I'm a witness of that, you know. And every day as I go through life, uh, whatever it is that I do, I try to invite God into the very essence so that what I'm doing will be pleasing to him. It's something that I enjoy doing now because it makes life not so hard makes it extremely easy uh to to do that it even makes it easy when i'm witnessing to others Uh, god wants to be an ever-present help in a time of trouble and in today's society as we pay attention to what's going on around us you'll definitely know if you read your bible and know what revelation tells us that we're in some trying times Uh, There are those that need God moment to moment, and he's there willing and able to be there with and for you, and we'll call upon the warring angels to help you in circumstances that are too uh, much to bear. I encourage everyone at the sound of my voice that they would call upon the name of Jesus more frequently. Yeah, I know we say, yeah, we'll study our Bible or we'll try to do good deeds and things of that nature. Uh, But personal relationship with Christ is key. The more that we talk with Christ, walk with Christ, 
invite him into our lives to rest, rule, and reign supreme. Uh, it makes life so much sweeter for all. Uh, it doesn't mean that we won't have any struggles, but it does mean that we'll get through them all victoriously. In conclusion, I would like to leave you all with a question. Will you receive deliverance from God, or will you continue trying to do things on your own? Let us now transition into the love, life, and victory part of the call. Is there anyone that didn't get a chance to say good morning that would like to do so now? Good morning, Ms. Gigi. Thank you for your declaration. Good morning, Gigi. Good morning, this is Cedric. Thank you, guys. Good morning, Cedric. Happy Monday to you. Good morning, it's Krishanda. Thanks for your declaration. So good to hear you guys sound. God bless you. Good morning, Sam. Thank you. Good morning. This is wonderful, Wanda. Thank you for your declaration. Good morning, wonderful, Wanda. Happy Monday to you. Thanks for joining us. I just want to say that I'm uh, I'm a recovering addict alcoholic as well, and uh, I can relate to no human power can relieve that thing from you. Only God can. So all praise Thanks. be to God. Thank you. Good morning, Sister Lisa. Happy uh, Monday and great decoration. Have a great day. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Um, this is Latoya. I just wanted to thank you for your declaration. I came on a little late, but um, it was kind of reminding me of some conviction that I got this weekend because my husband is not saved, and I have someone bring to my attention the question of why would God save you in your marriage for him to leave your husband behind? Like, you know, does that make sense to you? But also because we're at a point where, you know, um, God has made it where I am the provider right now, and he doesn't have a job. And every place he looks, he's just getting turned around and turned out. And I know it's only by God's hand that he has us in this um situation in this space but it not only convicted me it opened my eyes when you said like God has to deliver you from that place so you can get back into alignment with who he created you to be in the first place so um but it also kind of excited me to go to God and be like God okay how do I you know not only continue to handle this but when it is over you know to be able to rejoice in the things that he will do to put me back in place as, you know, being his wife and allowing him to take over. And I think sometimes I struggle with even the thought of, you know, will he do it right? Can he do it? Um, will he be saved when he do it? Um, and just all these questions that I have that I honestly haven't brought to God because I've kind of been nervous about the answer because I know God will tell you the honest truth and he will give it to you in a way that's gentle and compassionate but he's going to tell you the truth so I've kind of been like I don't want to know but I do want to know like Lord what is up ahead like you know uh, we've been sitting in this space for almost three months now and I'm trusting you and I'm trying my hardest to still respect and honor my husband as the lead and the head but what comes next like why are we in this space right now? So I just really appreciated your declaration this morning and you guys' this testimony, and I just wanted to say thank you. You're welcome. You're very welcome, sis. That was one of the challenging things uh, for me is to uh, allow him to get that space back. But, uh, again, that was uh, something that I had to be 
you know, like I said, delivered from. Like, but I can tell you, once you do get back in line, it feels like a weight is lifted off your shoulders. Like, whew. And and don't put yourself through more than you have to. God will let you know exactly when. Good morning. Good morning. It's Dee Dee, Leticia, and John. Oh, my God. What a dynamic duel. Thank you guys for your transparency. Um, wow. That's good. That's how you get delivered. John, commend you for just being a man of God and then how you two showed us in living color when those vows say for better or worse. That's what that is. So you don't give up and throw in a towel and the teacher, thank you because this is um, year 11 and my second marriage, and I understand it now, my role. Like you said, get delivered from thinking because me being the single mom and running my house with my three children and then getting to a new marriage that I had to relinquish that and let him lead, good, bad, indifferent, but healthy because that makes a difference too. So I just thank you guys for giving us a just life application of what deliverance looks like in real life. Like, you know, we hear a lot of people that's gone through 12-step programs, whatever it is. Um, it's not just drugs and alcohol. They have sex addictions. They have shopping addictions. They have gluttony. There's so many um, areas that we need to get delivered from. But just to have a beautiful couple get on here and just, man, it's beautiful. I love you guys, and thank you for just sharing um, your testimony with us this Monday morning. Love you, too. Thank you. Love you, too. Anytime. I think for the, I think one of the things that um, I was struggling with was not having Christ in my life was that his sin was so big to me. And then I had to be taught that a sin is a sin. No matter how big or strong, big or small, a sin is a sin. And I, I think that that was one thing that um, allowed me to, well, helped me change my mindset, you know, like, I can't get over this sin, but yet he turned and allowed me to look at some sins that I was doing, which was, okay, you're not, you're not operating in your order. You're out of order. Day in and day out, no matter what he did, you're out of order. So that was something else that uh, God had to show me, too. Good morning, Letitia. It's Rochelle. Good morning. Good morning, morning sis. Yes, to God be the glory. Um, thank you for your share. Um, welcome, John. Thank you for coming on in the room and <clears throat> excuse me, taking your jacket off um and just being able to sit down and dine and feed at the same time. Um yeah. I like the fact that you came to yourself, that you acknowledged that had that there had to be a change. Because of the partnership, I think a lot of times, um, I'll speak for myself, um, you know, there has to be um, a, an acknowledgement of something that has to change. And Letitia, Leticia, just the way that you stood in and been, been a help me um, until the change came is huge for the acknowledgement of what needed to change and how to change and how to stay in position and then relinquish position when um, the Lord said so. So that was really good. Um, I, I keened on that. The, I'm keen, I like numbers, but I keened on the seven and how it completed at that seventh year. And then you came to yourself as a new beginning in that next year. So, Keep going, keep going, keep encouraging. Um, you guys bless my heart this morning. Thank you. Good morning, Leticia. This is glorious, Gloria. God bless you. <laughs> Good morning, John. Good morning. I, I was totally blessed by you, your um declaration this morning and you're sharing the transparency. I mm -hmm. am grateful. It it's a blessing to hear 
how God does honor um, our commitment to abide abide by his word and be obedient to him and to give living proof and for you to be able to open your mouth wide and testify of how God has saved your marriage and blessed you and strengthened you. And now you're able to tell anybody flat for it uh, without any kind of recourse that God is real. He is a prayer answering God and he does deliver and save. So God bless you. I thank God for you. I'm going back on mute. Yeah, amen. You know, I'll tell y'all, you know, as we continue to go through life struggles, they don't stop. Trust me, they do not stop. They continue on. Uh, but let me give you something that will uh, encourage you through this. You know, if you're not being bothered by something, then you should want to ask yourself a question. Am I in the will of God? Because we're only a threat to Satan when we're doing better and doing what God asks us to do. Anybody that's going through life and they're having no problem whatsoever, they ought to check their salvation. So just stay encouraged. You know, when trials and tribulations come apart, come about to you, know that you're in the will of God, you know, and, and do your best to get through it. Uh, what is that, Proverbs 27, 17, through iron sharpens iron, as a man sharpens the kindness of his friend. Reach out to the saints. Don't be afraid to be transparent with them. Let them know what's going on. And you'd be surprised. Who's going, we all go through the same struggles. The Word of God says there's nothing new under the sun. So we all go through the same things in life. It's just at what times in our life do we go through them. Uh, so, you know, each one reach one. And be a blessing to someone else. Don't sit there and hold all that stuff in because there are a gazillion lives that are depending on hearing your story. Amen. Have any feedback? Want to say good morning? Hey, Lakeisha and Lakeisha's husband. Sorry, I didn't catch your name. <laughs> But I just wanted to, this is my first time, at least I've heard you before, but I've never heard your husband. And I just wanted to say thank you for um, being so transparent and also for the encouragement and the, um, the wisdom you gave through your testimony. It was very inspiring. And I just, <clears throat> I just want to thank you all for just coming and, and being on one accord and showing us what a united marriage um, looks like and how you all stood stood after every test and trial and still came out giving God all the glory. So thank you, bless you. Thank you, sir. Well, welcome thank back. You. Good morning, Leticia and John. This is Good Natasha. Morning. Okay. I just, hey, I just wanted to hop on and say thank you. I actually um, joined the call a little late. I came in when Dee Dee was, was speaking, but I just wanted to want to thank you for your obedience and willingness to serve on Declare Victory and all the things that you do, um, not just declaring, but greeting and, and behind the scenes. So we appreciate you. And I am just based on the comments that I've heard, uh, very much looking forward to catching the replay, and I uh, thank you in advance for how I know it's going to bless me. <laughs> so I wish you guys both a, a good day. Um, thank you. Thank you. Well. You're welcome. Anyone else? Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes, ma'am. Good morning, Leticia and John. John, welcome. I enjoyed you both this morning. I just wanted to say thank you for 
sharing your heart and sharing your wife for years on end. But uh, we welcome you into uh, the DV family publicly. And I appreciate you all's uh, collaborative share this morning. Many blessings. Thank you. Well, I want to thank each and everyone who's joined us this morning. May you have a wonderful, 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 happy Monday. And tune in tomorrow, same time, 6 a.m. Pacific time. You can be blessed on the clear victory. Have a good one, guys. Have a good day, everyone. Have a blessed day, everyone. Blessings. Have a great day. Have a blessed day, everyone. Blessings. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed day. Have a good day.